Hello, welcome back to the workshop. It's fantastic to have you here because today is part, well, part five, almost cut myself there. This is pretty sharp. Part five of making this pirate's cutlass, this pirate's sword. It's fantastic to have you here. I really hope you enjoy. First things first, we're going to bring this to a 400 grit finish with the sandpaper scratches running straight up the blade. This is just going fantastically. I've been running errands, I've been doing computer work, hammering the phones, getting some business stuff done. Will has been... <laughs> Will, you did an incredible finish on that blade. It has 400 grit all the way up, nice longitudinal grind lines. It is looking sweet. What we're now gonna do is we're gonna take our oxy fuel torch, oxypropane torch, we're gonna lock that guard, this guard in the vise, and we're gonna bend this into that D shape that it needs. So this is... Very exciting because we're starting to get close to a finished sword! The guard has been bent, it has been flamed, so we have a beautiful finish on it, especially after we put the beeswax on while it was hot, and it is looking beautiful! Pommel we're working on, we're gonna be bringing up the shoulders a little bit there so it fits on a little bit farther up, make the handle a little bit shorter, but it's got a nice tight fit up there, doesn't shake at all. Got that little bit of tang sticking out to hot paint on the handle. Just a little bit more woodworking, a little bit more metalworking, and, uh, and we'll be done. So while he's messing around with that, getting that fit where it needs to be, I have this piece of wood. We're gonna be using this. I am gonna come in to my clapped out Bridgeport mill, and I'm gonna mill this, and then we're gonna start working on the slot. I didn't see you there. I've just been working on this tang fit up. So the way that I've been doing that is by covering the tang in blue dicum, and after we've drilled the holes, I've been slowly checking to see how the fit is. I'm just about right there. I think I might have just got it. So now that I've got the fit pretty dang close, I use this wooden mallet so I don't crack the wood, and I drive it on just a little bit at a time. We've got a line scribed in there that we just about hit where the wrought iron D guard comes up to.
the sword. And then even in a consistent 400 grit finish all the way down. We don't go any higher than that because we want to make sure that the acid has enough surface area to bite to to get a proper and deep enough edge. We have a guard made of raw time that fits beautifully with an incredible beeswax finished. We have a handle out of rosewood. It's looking pretty beautiful. We have an awesome raw time pommel. What's left, Will? We gotta do the etch. That's it. We've gotta do the etch, and then it's onto the assembly. We're gonna be going into ferric chloride, and this is where we see just how good this sword looks. This sword has been an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you've seen many mistakes that are very easy to resolve. You've seen, uh, you know, mistakes in a forge world, and you know what? End of the day, you can always make up another bit of the Damascus. You haven't lost that much time. You saw a mistake in the heat treat, and, and you know, as well proved, if you take your time, you can fix it. And he fixed it amazingly. The sword is completely, perfectly straight. In terms of the other mistakes right the way through, yeah, they can usually be fixed. You can usually go ahead and just, you know, it goes well. We can fix most things very easily, or at least with minimal worry. We have uh, two big issues right now, and we know exactly why they came about. 100% exactly why they came about. And it was really just due to poor planning on our own parts. This wobbles. Because it's not wood on wood with a tiny bit of glue, tiny bit of adhesive between it. Um, so that's a problem. We also should have used epoxy for this. The Araldite we should have used just for the steel on steel. Yeah. Um, we should have used proper epoxy for this. You know, again, that was, that was probably laziness on our parts. So we should have used proper epoxy for that. So we have that little layer of glue there, which means that this is wiggling. And we noticed this. And we thought to ourselves, okay, well, if that's wiggling, we better put some more pressure on our rivet, on our peened over uh, watch more what's it, to make sure that it all tightens up. Uh, and of course, what happens when you start hammering on something? Stuff tends to get looser. Um, and we're then putting enormous amounts of pressure on this piece of wood. And so we have two cracks that have formed, one on either side. Now, what, 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 a positive thing, a very great positive thing is as follows. I've said as follows number 10. Now, a very positive thing is that this looks so freaking Awesome! Now we thought the pattern wasn't going to look good, we'd done a test etch so we knew what it looked like. We thought the pattern was going to be a little bit bland, not what we wanted. We should have done more high layer count in our Damascus, and that would have brought those higher layer counts a little deeper in. But we've got those weld lines up it, it looks awesome, and this, the wood colour, the wrought iron, <coughs> it all works beautifully, aesthetically. Like that is a really nice piece, it feels absolutely incredible in the hand. So what do you say, Will? I have my ideas as to what we do. What are yours? I don't, man. I don't, I don't know. I, uh, I would be okay with, with grinding off the rivet and, and redoing the entire handle, including the pommel. Um, but we're under a bit of a time crunch. I think. Like, it's, it's one of those things. Just, we, we, we discussed this a little bit earlier. Um, whenever you make something, even if you're not selling it, and it's just like a, an awesome thing to keep for fun, you know. Even then, it still carries your name on it, you know. It still carries, this is made by you, us, in this case. 
Um, and, and that's why I think that uh, it's pretty important that we can always look back on our work and at least say it's the best that we could do in the circumstances. Um, I think that's how you take pride in what it is that you can do. It's always saying, you know, hey, this is the best that we can do in the circumstances, given our knowledge, our skill level, the resources around us. I think 100% we drill off that rivet and we work this out with a better piece of wood. Okay, let's do it. On my last build, you saw me bed the tang using PTFE tape. Right now, we're doing it with crayons. Gentlemen, it is three o'clock in the morning. My voice hurts. I'm so exhausted. What you're seeing now, I don't know where this energy is coming from. It's probably coming from the fact that the sword is in the lathe and it is done. There is one more thing to do. You're gonna see that tomorrow. But now I hope that you are gonna have a fantastic day. I hope that you're gonna have awesome fun making something in your own workshop very soon full of massive successes hope you overcome all the trials and tribulations as we have on this because when you see this tomorrow